up a scum. Who am I? I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. <laughs> What's up, guys and gals? It's Luke Skywalker with Rebel Alliance and Team Ordnance uh, bringing you a Clash Royale video. Um, I know some of you have been wondering about the uh, chest rotation. Um, when the magicals are coming, you know, we all want those magical chests. Uh, so I thought I'd make this little video so you guys can kind of predict it. So let's go ahead and go to the link so I can show you guys what's up. All right, so. This is how the chest rotation goes. Um, it did get adjusted after this last update, so you get them more frequently because they really weren't coming around last time. Um, so here's how it goes. Um, these first two, these first section up here, that's if you literally just started the game. So those are like the trainer sections. You know how you have to fight like six times, and then the main cycle begins. So, the very first chest is going to be a silver, then a silver, then a silver, then a gold, silver, silver, gold. And you see at number 11, that's your first magical chest. Um, I started my new account, Darth Vader, a few weeks ago, and I have been following this uh, list, and it has been spot on, guys. It is exact to the T. Um... And it sucks because that first magical chest, you're like in Arena 2, you know, and it, it's like all garbage, <laughs> which kind of sucks. But um, as it goes on, uh, it gets pretty far down, and then you hit Giant Chest at number 51. Um, just to clarify, what all this means is um, these numbers are wins. Um, and, and like I always say, you have to have an open chest slot. So let's say you win a match, and then you lose like five in a row. You're still on, if you start at the beginning, you're still on number one. You still have only progressed one slot. Okay, so that means you have to win 11 more, or 10 more times with an open chest slot to get that magical chest. Okay, that's how it works. Um, losses don't mean anything in the rotation. It's just like nothing happened. Um, you cannot reset the ro reset the rotation. You just got to go with it. So For players like me, I'm just like, okay, well, where the heck am I in the rotation? Um, unfortunately, you, you kind of have to wait to see when you get a giant or a magical chest so that way you you have a marker So then you can come back to the list and go, okay, okay, say if I just got a giant chest now I got to find all the giant chests on the list and then kind of after that giant chest is open, then you gotta kind of match up and see where you're at. So if I get four silver chests and then a gold chest, I know I'm right here in the rotation. But if it's not matching up, you gotta find another giant chest slot, which is right here, and say if you got two silver and a gold and then three silver and a gold, that means you're right here in the rotation. Um, this chest order is available for you guys in Reddit. Just uh, go ahead and Google um, chest rotation for Clash Royale, and that'll bring you to this uh, list. It's easy to find. Um, so that, that's just one helpful thing that I've found with this game, uh, especially with Darth Vader, because I started fresh after the update, which is really nice. I know what I'm getting next. I know I'm like, okay, I got 10 more chests and I got the magical. So it, it's, it's a nice little thing to have and to know, you know, you can just predict the chests. Um, so that's one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, because I know a lot of you have been curious about it. Alright, so let's go ahead and get into Clash Royale. Okay, so... Um, this new update has brought on a lot of interesting changes. Uh, it only really kind of affects the people in Workshop, Royal Arena, and uh, Legendary Arena. 
But I just wanted to go over these things. I guess there's gonna be a new update tomorrow with all these new changes. Let's go ahead and look at the list. Oh, whoops. That's not the list. Inbox. So all these changes are coming up. Uh, a few things that I'm stoked about, a few things that I'm just like really supercell. Like you guys are such friggin' idiots, I swear to God, sometimes. Um, one thing I'm stoked about is the golem. You guys know I love the golem. Uh, he's getting an increase in hit points, which is awesome because he'll be even more of a beast. Um, I know he's rare, guys, but keep finding him. Save that gold. Get him in the shop when he pops up. You have to stay in workshop consistently. You have to be there for a while for him to pop up. Otherwise, he's not going to pop up for you guys. So save that gold. Try to stay in workshop as long as possible and just wait it out. You will get him. He's going to be even more awesome now after this update. Um, the Royal Giant has just been obnoxious. It seems like this last update has turned everyone into a mortar slash expo user <laughs> using this freaking Royal Giant. I mean, he is ridiculous. He gets, what, one step over the bridge on your side and just starts raining down fire. And you got to drop, like seven eight nine elixir on him just to stop him and he'll still get off a couple hits which to, to me that's just not appropriate it's not it's not cool for the game literally like i fought the last 20 or 30 matches every single one of them has had a royal, uh, royal giant and it's just ridiculous i've had to adjust my deck around this stupid common card he's a common card you guys not even an epic or a rare and i've had to adjust my deck over it just to be able to defeat him and, and to me that just doesn't make sense you know you, most people adjust adjust their decks around an, a legendary card and um to me this just does not make sense they are decreasing his damage by four percent but that's like 10 damage per second that's like nothing that's chump change that's just ridiculous so people are still going to be abusing him um, so I want to show you guys a couple of ways to defeat him. Um, I know a lot of players don't use him unless they're in a Royal Arena because that's when you get him. But he's still used in Workshop sometimes and you guys are going to be facing him when you get up in Workshop and Royal Arena. So I want to show you guys how to take him down today. Um, another thing that has been popping up is the Miner. Um, if you guys follow anybody else on YouTube, I've been talking to some YouTubers and reading blogs and watching other YouTubers videos and the minor is deadly you guys. They're coming up with these minor combinations that are ridiculous and there's not much you can do about it. And as you can see, they're increasing his hit points by 6%, which is just going to be a nightmare. So. I've been fighting some minor decks lately and they're pretty tough, but I've been doing okay against them, but it's going to be another OP card unfortunately. I don't I don't think Supercell really plays their own game <laughs> to see what is actually going on. They make some really silly decisions sometimes and I'm just I'm not happy with how they address their game sometimes. Um So let's go ahead and check out a a replay. Um, this guy was using um, the miner and the lava hound, which is pretty ridiculous. This guy was using a level two miner, which is insane. You know he spent some serious money on this freaking game. Plus, he was using the royal giant. So let's go ahead and watch that one because I think you guys will benefit from that um, when you start facing these cards. And turn down my valium here. Okay. Um, one thing that can combat uh, the Miner and the Royal Giant is the Mini P.E.K.K.A. This is how I've had to adjust my deck, is to throw this Mini P.E.K.K.A. in my deck. Um, I had to upgrade him and spend like three or 4,000 gold just to get him up, up to speed. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my pump down. Uh, the, I don't know why I would always call it a pump. Freaking Molt always calls it a pump, and I'm just repeating his crap. <laughs> um, but yeah, I throw my Elixir Collector down. I guess that's getting a nerf. But here comes the freaking Royal Giant. Uh, you guys need a cannon in your deck. I insist. Put a cannon in your deck right now. It helps against hogs. You know, the hog cycle deck, uh, swarm deck, spawner deck, uh, tank decks. 
throw the cannon in there, you guys. It is such a valuable card at three elixir. It has to be in all of your decks. So find a card you, you can live without and throw it in there. I promise you, you will not regret it. All right, so this guy's kind of got a funky deck besides the uh, the miner and the royal giant. Not really a typical royal giant deck, although the zap is common and barbarians are common in the royal giant deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my golem thing, like you all know I do. Uh, right now he's just burning elixir, kind of waiting on to see what I'm gonna put behind it. I throw down the archers and he throws a fireball out of my archers. That's like a terrible freaking elixir trade. But thanks, buddy. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw out my elixir collector, throw down my poison, get all this going down, take out the minions, help take down the canyon, help. Take down some life on the crown tower, which does great work. Uh, my golem kind of gets locked behind the other golem, like a weirdo. Uh, right now I see a good opportunity to take out barbarians and hit some crown tower damage. So he's going to play his miner. Uh, he's going to just hack away at it. That miner is just such a little freaking sneaky beast. I'm zapping my uh, musketeer and a little bit of damage on my crown tower. That was kind of a weird use, but whatever, dude. Thanks. Here comes the Royal Giant again. Surprise, surprise. So I dropped my mini P.E.K.K.A. down. I had the Elixir Collector just one space up so it distracted them. So that way I could throw down my cannon and just combat all that. I countered all of that with those couple little moves. Now I got my mini P.E.K.K.A., my Golem, my Musketeer. I threw a fireball to hit the Barbarians. Just annihilated this guy's tower. Um, knowing your counters, guys. Uh, I'm gonna go over that with you right after this match. Uh, go ahead and throw down my pump just to stuff his Royal Giant. Mini P.E.K.K.A. to attack him. Cannon to make him target that once he's down, and it's just over. Um, I like to troll these guys. Usually I'm not a jerk with uh, emoji taunts, but I just, I get so frustrated when I fight a Royal Giant user because they're so skillless. And so I, I gotta laugh at them and say, thank you. All right. Okay, so I want to go over counters with you guys. Uh, because it's very valuable. Uh, memorizing the deck, knowing what cards you have to counter their cards. That is an extremely valuable skill to have, okay? Um, so, let's go ahead and look at all of the cards so I can tell you guys counters. Um, knight, goblins, uh, really don't play a factor in this game. I don't see them at all unless someone's using the goblins with the... Uh, Hog push, that's really common. Um, arrows obviously are used to take down uh, spear gobs, gobs, and most popular is taking down the minion horde. Uh, that's a great elixir trade, three versus the five that costs for the minion horde. But you guys, um, I really don't see a lot of people using the arrows unless you're way high up there in legendary arena where people have print, are using the Princess and the Minion Horde, so there's the use for it there. But if you're in Spell Valley, Pekka's Playhouse, um, Royal Arena, you guys need to be rocking the Fireball. Um, two mandatory cards that everyone has and that need to be in your deck are the Cannon and the Fireball. Cannon, uh, like I said before, it's such a great distractor against every single type of deck that they're going to throw at you. Every single type of strategy. Um, the Fireball is just such a better uh, elixir trade and counter for so many attacks and strategies people use on you. The arrows, they're not going to cut it. When someone throws a Barbarian Horde at you, you can throw a Fireball down and those Barbarians are gone. They have like five hit points left and your uh, Crown Tower is going to take them out. So it just erases it and you get one elixir trade positive for you on that trade. So... Please, guys, put the fireball in your deck. Uh, you need direct damage uh, for a crown tower. Say if you have like 190 hit points left on the crown tower, fireball is going to do it. So you have to have direct damage. You have to have a card in your deck to do that. And trust me, 100%, it's the fireball. Um, giant. Uh, like I discussed in my previous videos, uh, the giant is a great card. Um, Things that he can distract is uh, the prince. I do see the prince every once in a while, and that'll just shut him down. You put the, you wait till he does his charge. 
you put the giant right in front of your crown tower so he absorbs the charge your crown tower will actually take the prince out as your uh, giant distracts him and is walking you know forward and that will shut him down uh, the witch I really don't see used a lot anymore but I guess she's getting a little buff um, so we won't really discuss that and waste time the Valkyrie. A lot of people use the Valkyrie on me. Um, I build my golem push, as you guys know and have seen. Um, they wait till my golem passes uh, the bridge and all my other troops are behind him, and then they'll drop the Valkyrie. So I lose all my uh, push behind the golem, and then it's just the golem going in by himself. I mean, he'll still do great work, but that Valkyrie does some damage. Um, the Valkyrie takes care of a lot of stuff. The Valkyrie can take care of the princes, no problem. Even the giant Pekka. Um, barbarians, she takes down real quick if you drop her right in the middle of them. I mean, the Valkyrie can be a nightmare, so if you guys don't have like great cards that I'm talking about that you want to use, throw the Valkyrie in your deck. She's, she's definitely a good card. I really don't use her. I used her... Uh, for um, Darth Vader for a little while in the beginning in the in the first couple arenas, but then I started getting better cards, so I switched over. But she is a good card. Um, you guys all know what's up with the spawner card, so we won't go into that. Bomber is not really valuable uh, high up, and most of you guys are high up already, so he doesn't really doesn't really work. Um, the skeleton army. Uh, I really don't see anymore. Um, it's just too easily taken down. You can take it down with archers, spear gobs. A dragon will just annihilate it with splash damage. So I don't really see that. Um, the dragon is a very good card. Uh, one thing that can take it down is the musketeer. The musketeer will overpower it and take it down and still have a little life left, especially if you have your crown tower with your musketeer assisting killing a dragon. Yeah, that dragon's toast. But the dragon is a good card, you guys. I do use it. It's great for splash damage. Uh, we already went over the prince. Uh, he gets kind of countered with the giant. Uh, and you can even kind of counter him if you throw in the cannon. Like I said, you throw in the cannon and put archers or spear gobs behind the cannon. That prince is going to go down. And it's pretty much an even elixir trade. Um, goblin barrel, you guys know. Throw some arrows or a fireball at it and it'll take it down. I, I, I don't like that card. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lightning, another disgusting card. Nothing you can do about it. Uh, minions, you all know is countered with arrows, or the three minions you can take out with archers or spear gobs. Uh, one Elixir Skeletons, those are good. I used to use those uh, for a while on this account. Um, they can actually, if you drop them... When like a prince is charging, or even like a mini Pekka, and they're near your crown tower, if you drop those off, that's a huge elixir trade. Uh, it'll distract the, the prince or the Pekka long enough for your crown tower to help, and for the other skeletons to take it down. Uh, bomb tower got nerfed, so nobody really uses that anymore, thank god. Because it was just OP, and just everyone was using it. Uh, tombstone nobody really uses. Um, balloon. Some people do use the balloon. I know D uses the balloon. I think he has a level 3, almost level 4 balloon. Balloon can be deadly. Uh, and then again, your cannon can distract. You need to drop your cannon with all distracts with the cannon, you guys. Drop it one or two tiles right in the middle of your base. So that way, both ground towers can attack uh, that, that balloon and take it down. You need the benefit of both ground towers. That, that is huge. Don't just throw it down somewhere and only have one crown tower hitting. If you have time to accurately put it down, that's huge. Huge elixir trade. Uh, giant Skeleton. Um, I noticed some people still do use him. Um, so what you want to do to combat him, to counter him, is wait till he kind of gets uh, just across your bridge and drop two or three elixir cards in the center of your base. That way, you kite him over, you lure him over, you get both crown towers whacking at him, and he will go down before he gets near your crown tower. Um, I use like uh, spear gobs, and then like a set of archers, or even a musketeer with archers, and that'll take him down. It'll be an even or one plus elixir trade on your part, which is great. Uh, barbarians used in like 80% of decks. Um, people use like 
like to use them in front of the royal giant, which is so obnoxious. Um, <laughs> but it's a good strategy, I guess. But the barbarians, like I said, they can be taken out with the fireball and they're toast. So put that fireball in your deck, guys. It's important. Uh, people use barbarians to counter the hog rider, which is great. You know, they just eat up that hog with quickness. You're lucky if you get one attack off with the hog rider. Um, barbarian hut, you guys know. A rocket is so obnoxious. That's just like a freaking... Oh, God, I don't even want to get into it. Um, yeah, the expo, you can freaking suck it. Uh, the Rage. I still use the Rage with, I think, C-3PO. Um, the Rage is good. I used to use it before the Poison spell, and it's great. You get your push in there, you build up a push behind your tanking unit, and you just Rage it, and it just overwhelms them. They'll keep dropping stuff, but your troops will just eat them up real fast. The Rage is good, you guys. If you don't have um, the Poison spell, definitely use the Rage. That's very important. Rage and Fireball. You need those two. Uh, Minion Horde. Um... The minion horde, it gets eaten up by a fireball, it gets eaten up by arrows. Um, I can put down spear gobs and a musketeer, or musketeer or uh, archers and spear gobs, and it's just it gets eaten up. It is a popular card. A lot of people use it. It can be powerful, but a lot of people have uh, counters for it, so it kind of works in your favor more than it helps. Okay, so just keep that in mind, guys. Uh, Tesla, I guess, is getting a buff. It's getting uh, hit points increased because I guess a lot of people don't use it unless you're a freaking silly mortar player. So that's cool, I guess. I might test it out, see what it does. Uh, Hog Rider, um, he gets distracted easily. I love, I love it when people have Hog Cycle decks. I, I caught a, a cheater the other day and I reported him to Supercell um, that was using uh, the Hog Rider. I. I I wish I should. Uh, I wish I already did it. I should have posted it on on chat so I could show you guys the replay. But every two cards he could use the Hog Rider, and he was not using the mirror. And I caught it was like he could. He had a some software, some some program that he could adjust his cards so that he could keep using the Hog Rider every two card. Every two cards he would use two cards Hog Rider. Use two cards. Hog Rider, and that's not possible. It's It doesn't work that way. You have to cycle all the way through your deck to get back to that card. And he was doing every two cards Hog, every two cards Hog. And it was really ridiculous, so I ended up uh, reporting him. So hopefully that gets shut down, because I know they're all about fair play, you know? Anyways, uh, Inferno. Um, it is a great card to defend uh, tank decks, but I see more value in the cannon, you guys. Cannon is powerful. Especially if you upgrade it to, you know, level 6, 7, and even 8. 8, it gets huge. Um, and it's two elixir cheaper than the Inferno. The Inferno is cool. A lot of people do use it still, but I favor the cannon. It's cheaper, you can cycle through your deck faster, brings down your average, and that's what you want. Uh, Pekka. Pekka can be easily distracted, you guys. It can be taken down. Even if they build a push, uh, it can be taken down, so... It's still a great card. I still see a lot of people doing the P.E.K.K.A. Double Prince Freeze strategy. So, I don't know. It can go either way. Uh, freeze is getting nerfed. Uh, one second less duration. So, if you're, rely if you're one of those little hog freeze combo guys that I really don't like, yeah, good luck with using that strategy. Um, yeah, the Fire Spirits, they just keep giving them to me, and it's just ridiculous. As you can see, I almost have 500 of them, so if any of you want them, please request, and I will be happy to give them to you. Uh, Zap, yeah, Zap's pretty po uh, pretty popular, you guys. Uh, a lot of people are switching to the Zap-Hog combo. They drop the Hog, you drop something to counter, and they'll Zap it so the Hog Rider gets one or two more hits in, and that's pretty frustrating. Not much you can do about it. Um, the wizard, the wizard's, he's strong, but he goes down pretty quick. If you got a musketeer or archers, your wizard's not going to win. The archers are going to win over your wizard, and that's a two elixir trade. Especially if you've got a musketeer, that's a one elixir trade. The musketeer will rock the mm -hmm. wizard. Uh, oh, I have no idea what that is. Uh, the furnace is getting in there, uh, buff. Uh, it's going down to four elixir. I don't think people will still use it. Um, yeah, the mortar, you can suck it. Uh, I got Sparky and a super magical chest, but 
I don't know, a lot of things can common him. If you zap him, he loses his, ch his five second charge, which is ridiculous. So I, I don't know, I'm not really kind of using him. I was hoping for the princess or the ice wizard, but what are you gonna do? It's a legendary, I can't complain. Uh, the Royal Giant uh, can be countered with the cannon and the poison or mini P.E.K.K.A. Uh, you got to make sure when you drop the cannon, though, that's in it, that it's in his range. Because if you drop it too soon, he can kill it from afar and it won't attack him, and that sucks. Um, three Musketeers, those can be taken out with the Fireball Guides. That is one of the biggest elixir trades in the game. Fireball is four, and those three lovely ladies are nine. That's a huge elixir trade, so I wouldn't use them. And the Dark Prince, uh, he can actually be taken out with one Musketeer. Uh, if the Musketeer's down, he's, he's got his charge built, it don't matter. She will knock off his shield quick. He'll hit her with the charge, and she'll take him out before actually he uh, she goes down. It's, it's kind of cool, I've learned that. Okay, well, yeah... These are the cards I haven't found yet. I mean, I could have bought the guards, but I really don't want the guards. I haven't really found an, an exact use for them unless you're fighting against a Sparky, but not too many people have the Sparky, let alone use it. Um, let's see if I can show you guys um, another valuable... Um, thing here. Yeah, I've been getting my butt kicked against these Royal Giants. As you guys can see, there's a freaking Royal Giant in like every deck. This guy was using two Legendaries and a Royal Giant and a Hog Rider. It's so frustrating. Um, I think we can go ahead and wrap it up with that. Um, it's just it's just the same thing over and over that I've been fighting, like, and that's not going to help. I already showed you guys how to shut down the Royal Giant, so. Okay, um, well, I think that is everything that I wanted to talk about. Um, if you guys have any more questions about anything we covered today, go ahead and hit me up in chat. Um, I'm always happy to answer and to s hope that I can solve your problems and issues. Because this game does get frustrating, you guys. It really does. Um, it is, in a sense, pay to win, you know. But with good strategy, like I've shown you guys... You can shut down these freaking losers that spend, you know, a hundred, five hundred, ten thousand. People spend ten thousand dollars on this game, you guys. I am not kidding. I've seen so many YouTubers do it. It's disgusting. So it is kind of pay to win, but you can shut down these people that spend their money on this silly game. Okay, well, I think that'll wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope it helps. This is Luke Skywalker with Rebel Alliance. I will catch you guys next time.